record and share. And there we go. Okay, I'm just going to minimize that. Place it out the way. Okay. Okay, so on your Google Classroom, I have loaded the PowerPoint for you to go through afterwards. Uh, today's topic is SQL Unit 4.3, Calculated Columns. Okay, so in SQL, you can also do calculations. So let us take a look at these. Um, as you will see, I am copying QR codes for you. Uh, all you need to do is take your cell phone, your tablet, any device that can read a QR code and scan it in and it will open you up to a YouTube um, I'm trying to remember, um, I can't remember the, the person who's presenting it, but his videos are truly good. I would suggest you actually go through a couple of his videos and um, remember there are many, many Delphi videos out there to assist us. Okay, so let's start with calculated columns. When working with data sets, you may wish to perform some calculations on a field before returning the selected data. So for example, your movies database is showing the income of the movies in rands, even though most of the income was earned in dollars. In situations outside of South Africa, you may wish to first convert the income to dollars before displaying the results. So to do this, you need to make use of a calculated field. So, um, if I'm dealing with American um, currency and things like that, then this is where it would be easier to read it in um, with a conversion. Okay. So let's just get the laser pointer going. Calculated field. What does that mean? It means the field that is calculated each time you run the query. Okay. That is a theory question. It can appear in your theory exam. So please write it down somewhere. So a calculated field is displayed in the same way as any other field on your table. The only difference between a normal field and a calculated field is that as the name suggests, the calculated field is calculated each time you run your query. Okay. This means that the data from the calculated field is never actually stored in the database, but as you run the database, as you run your query, it will then recreate this information for you each time. Okay. Okay, so to create a calculated field, you enter the calculation into your SQL query as a selected field. So how would I actually write that syntax? I would write select, choose my field names, then here's a new word calculation okay so immediately when i type the word calculation sql knows i need to do a process a sum or something i need to do something from your table name okay so but this is not as simple as just plain there we go do a calculation because now it doesn't know what to calculate so let's take it further the problem with these queries is that the calculated fields do not have a heading. This makes it difficult to interpret the results. So to assign the, a name to the heading, we are going to use our as clause. Okay, so let us look at the as clause. So calculated field syntax with as. I'm going to select my field names, write, do my calculation as calculated field name from table name. Okay, so do you see the difference between these two? Here I've added as calculated field name. Okay, so here's the plain field name. This one is the new field that you are creating and it's stored in temporary storage and we will call it the calculated field name. Okay, so calculated field names cannot be used in the other clauses such as order by. So just to pay attention to that. SQL calculations use the same mathematical operators as BOD mass. Remember, BOD mass is brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Okay. Okay. 
Let's just check. Okay, the chat is there. Let's go on. Come now. Okay, let's take a look at our first example. In the query below, the income is divided by 14 to convert the rent to dollars. So over here, you can see um, it's here dollar income. Okay, and it, what this basically means, it's 14 rand to one dollar. Okay, so use the as command. The calculated field is given the name dollar income. So I'm going to choose my calculated field example, select title from income, and I am going to say my income divided by 14 as and I'm going to assign it to dollar income. And from where, I'm going to use TBL movies. Okay, so in the previous SQL statement, you actually just said select title income from TBL movies and then you specified criteria. Now, you are actually specifying your criteria before you select your table. Okay, so. Looking at the image alongside, you will see there is a new calculated field called dollar income, which shows the ori original income of the movies divided by 14. Okay, so let us test this out. Uh, well, let me just find my movies. Um, SQL, remember these are, they are attached to your um, activity. So, you need to type here. Select title income and the fields income, but this time I'm going to say divide by 14 as, and I'm creating my new field dollar underscore income from which table? TBL movies. And there you go. As you can see, it's created the new, for, new field for us, dollar income, and it has displayed over there. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Activity 4.11, select columns and rows. Using the apps in the folder from the database movies.mdb, uh, create and test queries that will select the following data. So you are going to quickly look at three, these three questions. I'm going to go out of presentation mode so that I can type on. Um, I just want to open the document here on the side so that I have everything with me. Okay, so let's see. It says then, who can answer 4.11.1 for me? All movies showing the movie title and a calculated field called lower score that subtracts 10 from the score. I would like you to try that. You're going to enter your answer into the Zoom chat. Okay, thank you, Kahiso. Let's quickly get on and just get both pages on. Uh, why is it not opening? Sorry, just give me one second. Just getting to where we are. Unit 4.3. And we are on the memorandum. Okay, great. So, um, Kahiso has said, select title, comma, score, minus 10 as lower underscore from TBL movies. Let us check our answer here. Let's use the correct mouse. That is correct. Title, comma, score, uh, minus 10 as lower score. So, I'm going to quickly enter that. Uh, let's see if I can get into, there we go, sorry, I just need to jump back in there. Okay. And I'm going to use 
sorry, I'm just trying to find a color that you'll be able to see clearly. Oh, yeah. There. Okay, so let me find my, sorry. Much easier just using tab. And here is this. So I'm going to write select title score minus 10 as lower income. Oh, sorry, lower score. Sorry about that. Score from TBL movies. And I'm going to execute it. And there we go. As you can see, there it has displayed my lowest score for each movie. Well done. Okay, so let's copy this in to our PowerPoint. Okay, let us try number 4.11.2. All movies showing the movie title and a calculated field called Income in Billions. That divides the income by one, is that one billion? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, by one billion. Okay, who can answer that one for me? Okay, let's try. We are going to say here, select title from, uh, sorry, select title, income. Let's just take this out. Income divided by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as income underscore in underscore billions from TBL movies. Let's see if I got my enough zeros. Okay, so here I can see my income for each movie in billions. Okay, wow, that's quite a big amount. Okay. Great. So I'm now going to continue with the presentation. Ah, sorry, I forgot to copy that into the answer for us. Control C. So there we go. Okay. Select title, comma, income divided by 1 billion as income in billions from TBL movies. Okay, you can complete 4.11.3 for homework. Let us carry on here. Okay, um, can I just get an indication if you can still see my screen? I think I've lost my uh, point at this point in time, but it's okay. We are now going to carry on with uh, functions and calculations, number functions specifically. Okay. Sorry, just trying to get to the correct screen here. Um, there we go. Okay. Okay, so example 4.18. All carnivores listing the general name and a calculated field area per animal where the area per animal, that's the new field you're going to create, is there less than six meters squared per animal to determine overcrowded enclosures. Okay, so what this query is about. Um, just make sure that you are now working in um, the carnivores database. We are now finished with the movies database. I'm going to quickly open that for us. So you will 
unzip that one. It works exactly the same as the previous one. Okay, there's my SQL. I'm just going to close the other one so I don't get them confused. Okay, so um, so basically this is a very good one um, example. If you are trying to check that you don't have too many people, let's take this lockdown situation. We have to now work out that if we do go back, there cannot be more than 100 people or depending on what the final stats are going to be. So you may need to do a calculation to work out um, the population, how many people there are, and then how many people will be allowed to move around. Okay, so this is the same type of calculation you're going to do. So let's get back to this one. The calculated field name cannot be used in the WHERE clause, only the actual calculation. So select general name, enclosure size, divided by the number of adults plus the number of the young, so here, what we've now starting, we are becoming, our SQLs are becoming more complex because I'm adding two fields together and I'm doing a, a, a calculation. So that section in your pet, it's probably about 12 or more marks. It's quite a lot. I think the whole SQL marks are about 30 marks. Um, you are required to do complex SQL. So when you do something that has multiple calculations in, we can consider that as a complex SQL. Okay, so let's get back here. Uh, I've lost my mouse again. Select general name, enclosure size, divided by, and when I say number of adults and number of young, that means all of the, um, all of the animals. Then as animal per Area per animal from where? Table carnivals, where? Okay, so previous time we stopped it from table carnivals. Boom, that's that. Now I'm adding an additional criteria. Okay, so do you see how your SQL is busy building into more and more um, specialized SQLs? And you will be amazed the amount, the, the data that you are able to retrieve from your your own database. Okay, so from table carnivals, where enclosure size is divided by the number of adults plus the number young, which are less than six, because I wanted to know in an enclosure of six meters squared. Okay, let's quickly find our, well, come back. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to type here, select um, general name. My next field is enclosure size. And I'm going to divide it by num adults plus num young. That's another field as area per animal from where, which table am I going to use? I'm going to use my TBL carnivores. And additional clause, I'm going to add where the enclosure, let's just move it so that you can see, with enclosure size, is divided by my total number or num adults adults plus num young and they must be the area must be less than six do you see how long this sql is you can make your sql your calculation as long as you want just make sure that you don't over complicate it let's see and there we go. Okay, so we're just going to see there. Okay, so there is all our information. Area per animal. Okay, we are able to see. But now do you see, this is actually a little difficult to read. You're not going to go and say to someone, 
um, I have 5.3 meerkats recurring. There's lots of them. Okay, so when you want to display this to your client, um, you are going to try and give it in the most simple form. You don't have half an animal, like just like you don't have half a human. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to work through this until we get a more defined answer. Okay. Okay, so how do we fix this? You can use the four functions shown in the table below as part of your SQL um, command. So there are four of them. The int. So this returns a whole number and it's going to disregard or discarding any decimal value. So basically, it only gives you the whole number and um, it's going to drop anything after. Remember you used to do this with modern div? Okay, this is the same type of thing. Only thing is, will you then have the most accurate answer? Okay, usually at such a level of what we're working out now, they work on estimation. But if you wanted a more accurate one, I would not use int because then you are disqualifying some of the animals. Then there is round. You've known round since grade 10. This rounds a number to the indicated number of decimals. So first of all, I will say round, then select my field, and I need to specify how many decimals. Is it two, is it four, etc. String, or SDR, returns a date, time, or number as a string. So you, you know string by now. And then format. Okay, remember you started doing format um, with uh, FF currency, FF fixed. Okay, here it's going to return date, time, or a number as a string in a specific format. So here you have format, my selected field, and then how you will be formatting your string. Okay, so this is just a bit of revision. Things you've been using since grade 10 you are now using in a more complex manner. Okay. Oh, I think we can, might run out of time today. Let's see how far we can go. Replace the select clause above with the ones below. So here we had this one, select general name. So instead of the previous one, uh, let's quickly pull it up. We had, let me go to the beginning, select general name, and I just said enclosure size. Okay, what I'm going to change here, instead of enclosure size, I'm going, oh, outside enclosure size, I'm now going to put str, put that in brackets, and add my closing parenthesis, as Aeropern animal from carnivores, from, okay, T-bell carnivores, and I'm going to drop that last bit. Okay, let's see how our answer is affected. Okay, there we go. So here it is telling me I have, let's just get to the beginning of it so you can see. Okay, select general name. There's my general name. I'm going to take my string and the string is made up of enclosure size divided by the number of animals as area per animal from TBL in animals. Okay, so we're getting a little closer, but we still have too many decimals. So let's keep working on it. Now, this time what we're going to do is we're going to try round. Okay, so let's see if round is going to give us a better option. So instead of the SDR, we're going to enter round and keep it as the same thing. Okay, ha. Okay, the previous time, I, ah, what I forgot there is, do you see, I'm going to say two decimal places. So if you didn't want to have any decimal places, you would actually leave them off like I did previously. Let's say I still want two decimal places. And there you have cheetahs are 16.67. You will notice that the data in the textbook are slightly out, same data, but um, we get achieving different results. So this is the PowerPoints based on the, the new results. Okay, so that was using the round function. Let's try the next one. Okay, so this time we're going to try the int. 
Okay. And we're going to say int. Okay. And let's just check that it's still the same enclosure size, except this time I'm not going to have any decimals and I'm going to run it. And there we go. Okay. But now int, remember, drops anything after the decimal. So um, this is an estimate. It's not an accurate answer. Okay. Let's try the next one. Here we are going to this time try our format. And what? There are two ways I'm going to show you. The first one, I'm going to use the format 00, .00. The next format I'm going to show you is with hashes. Okay. So let's try it with 00. zero. So over here, I'm going to enter comma 00. zero. First, remember it is a string I'm working with. 0, 0.00 and I'm going to run it. Oh, I have forgotten something. Let me quickly see. Uh, let's see. Select. Oh, this is why because I was still stuck on int. I want format. Okay, let's try again. There we go. Okay, so here I've specified I want two digits before the, the decimal and two digits after my decimal. Okay, so I just want to show you again. Oh, we are having a terrible lag here in our area. So if um, please just let me know if the video does lag. Okay, so there you see it's 16.67. And I used the 0, 0, 0, 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try it with hash. Okay. Everyone's still with me? Great. Okay, so over here, still in, in uh, quotation marks, hash, hash point hash hash and I'm going to run my SQL and do you see now what happens is it has actually dropped the digit in some cases okay so for Caracal it's now just nine Wildcat just six okay so there are different formats and different ways that you are able to do this you just need to decide how you would like your information to be displayed Okay. Okay, so let's just do a little recap here. Take note that the format string from the format function takes similar string values to Delphi's. A new format, um, ex a new format examples with their outputs are shown below. So let's take a look here. So we have format, release date, and this one, how I want the format is day day month, 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 year, year, year. So that means give me two digits for the day. The, when I use four M's, that means write out the whole month for me. If I only use three M's, it's going to shorten, give me the, the shortened version. And I want the full year. Okay, let's look at the next one. Day, day, month, month, year, year. So that is going to give me a digital answer or digital date 15 10 18 okay now do remember what we did say um, yesterday about using international dates I would possibly rather write YYMMDD to ensure because over here you won't have a problem oh we're gonna run out of time soon okay um, so I'm going to have to finish quickly I uh, here you won't have a problem with 1510, but say it was the 5th of October, then it wouldn't know is it the 10th of May or the 5th of October. Okay. Over here, day, day, month, 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 year, year, year. And I've included my minutes, hours, minutes, and seconds. Do you see? Minutes is represented as an N there. Okay, so 15 October 2018. 12, 15, 52. So you can specify literally 
to the second what time that occurred. Let's look at income. I can have just a simple like rands and cents. Okay. Here I have um, zero with two hashes. That is going to drop any of the decimals. Um, this is income with a currency. So it will add in the format with a rand, depending on the settings of what your Delphi is set at. Please, for your exams and your PATs, make sure that your setting is set to South Africa. And then format, doing calculations. So num young divided by my total. So num young plus num adults. And um, with a zero percentage, minus 84%. So that is the different types of formats you can use. Okay, let's just see if there were any questions. Um, Kahisos asked, does the hash represent the character present? Um, what do you mean in that? If you can just let me know sp specifically. Otherwise, um, you can send me the question on Google Classroom and I'll find it out and respond to you. Um, you could just send it on the post I sent this morning linked to the Zoom lesson. Okay. Okay, let's quickly see if there's one more slide here. Come now. Okay. Here is you need to please complete activity 4.12. Um, all your activities are going to be due on Monday. Some of them were due already today um, that I'd already loaded. The rest yesterday and today's lessons are going to be due on Monday. So if you've got a little bit of time to still do it, um, make sure you are making notes about this. Okay. I want to try and get through the section because uh, when we get back to school, we will um, have to carry on with other work. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, may you have a wonderful day today. Uh, let's just, there we go, it's the end of the slide. And I'm going to pause my recording. Thank you very much.